Hi, Mike Beckett from The Dead Prophet here. Our slogan here at The Dead Prophet is where a biblical worldview and real life collide. You know, on the show, we talk about many different topics. We talk about uh, topics that are political, historical, biblical. We talk about things that help encourage us in our walk with our faith as a disciple of Christ. In the recent events that have happened in the last 36 hours with the bombing of Israel uh, by Hamas and Hezbollah and Iran, I thought it was important to contact Steve Winters, one of our regular guests on the show, and and revisit that Are We Living in the Last Days and have a conversation about uh, what what does this bombing, what does this recent uh, political event that is taking place uh, have uh, in, in Scripture? Should we be concerned? Should we be praying for the peace of Israel? How should we take this and how should we look at this? So uh, this is obviously an unplanned recording, an unplanned taping, and an unplanned show. So I'm going to ask you to take uh, the time, uh, enjoy this hour discussion that Steve and I have back and forth about the politics, uh, the uh, apocalyptic understanding of Scripture, looking at the key players of the Ten Horns, uh, looking at, again, revisiting where the United States uh, is, is or isn't going to be a player in this. So enjoy this episode uh, and this show, and have a great day. Mike Beckett, uh, host of The Dead Prophet, and this is a special edition here. This is a non-planned, non-scheduled um, show, uh, which is what I like because that's the fun part of having a friend of mine who also likes politics. And um, Steve, it is great to have you back. We're going to talk just a little bit tonight about uh, the happenings within the last 36 hours on the global front. Um, if any of you remember, uh, Steve uh, was the first voice on our show here. And uh, uh, one of my really good friends and uh, uh, really good supporters here of uh, the Dead Prophet. And we started uh, the first session with, you know, how to live godly in a godless society. And as you and I do, when we always get talking, we go down all of these rabbit trails <laughs> and we started talking about, you know, end times. So we did a three part series on are we living in the last days? And it was it was pretty, um, pretty in depth politically. Um, looking at scripture, uh, analyzing, you know, some of the common scriptures that we look at when it comes to end time, where Israel fits in, where the United States would fit in. Obviously, we kind of made that decision pretty quickly because we're not scripture, we're probably not even in, in the days, you know. Um, but uh, talking about, you know, uh, the, the, the Arabs uh, coming down and attacking Israel from the north, um, just interestingly, in the last 36 hours, um, Hamas has come in and blown up parts of Israel and uh, has been supported by Hezbollah and and Iran, which happened to be names that we dropped when we were talking about, you know, how would Israel even have an opportunity historically, politically in potentially getting that prime real estate of of the temple to put to build the temple and have services again uh, and how how that would be able to happen. Uh, we've seen that. We've seen Iran uh, come against Israel. Uh, we've seen in the last 36 hours, Russia come up and decide they're going to do a cyber attack on, on have declared cyber war on Israel. Uh, I, I haven't heard anything about China yet, but China and North Korea, who are friends with Iran, and if we know historically, Back uh, most recently in the in the last fifteen years, Russia has signed uh, some you know let's forget our uh, past burdens of 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 hate and let's be friends with China and also signed one with with Iran, and so we have all of these 
playing components here that are linked to the whole idea that now Iran and Hezbollah has called for an Arab uniting for Palestinians in 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 Israel area for the Palestinians to take back their land. Um, now, with that being said, I don't think they have looked. Arab, the Arab Muslims have looked too deep into their history to realize that it's not really a good idea to launch one an attack, which usually has been the way it's been over the years, uh, launch an attack against Israel and have a positive outcome in the end. Um, not only that, uh, shortly after the attack, if I'm not mistaken, and I read the news right, and I think you even posted it in our post, there was a m- massive earthquake in Afghanistan that killed over 2,000 people. So there's a lot going on here, uh, and 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 there's a lot going on with what we were kind of just hypothetically talking about even just a couple months ago. So I, I guess I want to start today. What are your thoughts at the moment as to what is going on at this current juncture with the chaos over in, in Israel right now and our global instability at the moment? Well, um, a couple different angles there, right? Uh, first, the angle from from the Palestinians. Uh, and I guess I probably shouldn't put it that way because um, Hamas is not um, uh, not strong up in the West west bank it's only strong down in gaza so um you know not all of the palestinians can be lumped into the same group at this point in time but but hamas um uh you know hamas is is there i don't think there's any chaos from the standpoint of of hamas and because they are sponsored by hezbollah and iran i don't think there's any chaos from the standpoint of hezbollah or iran i think this is something that reveals a lot of planning uh reveals a lot of effort having been put into this and so you know you have to look at how this thing started it started with a you know with a big swing uh thousands of rockets um at least uh at least a thousand infiltrators uh, going across the border uh in gaza a lot of uh just uh wholesale slaughter of of civilians men women and children um aged you know just a wanton destruction um and so it's it's it seems to me that when you put all of those pieces together the obvious depth of planning that was necessary the connection between hamas and hezbollah in iran that i think this can't be the act of a crazy person of hamas and in Gaza, this is this has got to be coordinated. So mm-hmm. chaos is the wrong is not the the is how this is is um, uh, going on from the standpoint of the attackers of Israel. The chaos that, that is is I think a little bit of Israel's reaction. You know, everyone's surprised that that Israel was so surprised by this. Didn't seem like they they had any um, inkling that this was going to go down. Um, so, you know, if if it's this well planned and you're taking this kind of a stroke uh, to get it started, um, it seems to me that we're not we can't be far off of Iran being willing to go all in. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and I think, you know, if and if that is if that's part of what's what this could lead to, then we're then we really are at Ezekiel 38 and 39. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mentioned Russia. Russia is already, uh, you know, more or less a tag team with Iran. Yeah. And, and uh, the, the only other players then that would make up that alliance would be the Sudan and Libya. And we're not hearing anything from them right now. But if you do hear something from them in the next couple of days, uh, that's the kind of thing that really should kind of put up your antennas to say, um, you know, this is not this is not just a minor uh you know, we run into these kinds of things in the past with Israel, but, you know, if if uh, you start seeing uh, news reports of Sudan, uh, the Sudan starting to send materials and even personnel, and you see same thing from Libya, um, you know, you, this is Ezekiel 30, 38 and 39. We don't know that yet, but, mm-hmm. 
this is not, you know, this is not just a madman in, in Gaza, just uh, losing patience and going nuts. This is something I think demonstrates the kind of planning and kind of work that would have required Hezbollah and Iran being right on board. I'm surprised that Hezbollah hasn't done nothing but a, a couple of little uh, feints up in the north. Mm -hmm. I really thought that uh, Hezbollah would, would probably be jumping in more fully from the north. Um, but um, they may be waiting to see how how uh, involved Israel gets in the south before they do anything in the north. Who knows uh, the way that they think. But this is certainly something that um, something that was planned and, you know, to fall on the 50th anniversary of the Yom Kippur War. Um, you know, th this is a, this is not a, uh, this is not a passing fancy. This is, this is, this, this took serious logistical preparations. Um, they are, they are, uh, basically expending a lot of, you know, a lot of manpower, a lot of war capital. Um, this is, you know, so I think that, that, uh, we were, you know, really need to just keep an eye on this. And 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 to make things even more complicated, Israel and Saudi Arabia were working on nego continuing negotiations uh, well, and trying now. to reformalize their ties together, which really got started. Well, it, it kind of got pushed a little bit in those Camp David Accords, but really got pushed in the George W. Uh, Herbert Walker uh, realm, I think it was that I think it was that presence who really started moving, and then of course George Bush Jr. and so forth. But we're we're trying to to get those uh, alliances, and they're they're building that that friendship, the animosities that had been between the the Arab uh, Saudis uh, and the the Israelis. They were going somewhere. We were finally moving forward with some sort of peace between the two of them, and now because of this, it's been put on hold. And and you got to think about it. I mean, it's it's whenever somebody goes after Israel, it's it's an all on one side and an all on on the other. There is no there. It's not like World War Two where you can be um, Belgium and be neutral because what's going to end up happening is someone's going to come right through your door anyway. Uh, you know, it was interesting that uh, our president said that, uh, well, we, we stand with Israel because I'm liking great. There goes my gas. It's going up to five bucks a gallon next week um, <laughs> because OPEC is going to be the the big, big power hunger behind this because they're all the Arab countries that are Muslim countries well, that are in, in support for Israel's doom. That that may not that may not actually work out this way because there's so much animosity between the the Saudis and Iran um, that that I think that what you'll see the Saudis do is kind of what we're seeing them do now. Um, it's kind of, um, you know, pull back play their cards close to the vest, watch and see. I think that's going to be their attitude. Um, I find it interesting that that when when um, Daniel was talking about the the things that are going to end up, you know, happening in the in um, in the Holy Lands, you know, in a flood at the end, um, he talks about Saudi, you know, he talks about um, uh, Moab, Ammon, um, um not getting in you know not being involved um and so uh you know i've it, i've always um i've always expected that that um the saudis are going to find a way even to stay out of the they're, they're not going to be involved in the 10 nation the 10 horns um and so you know what i would suspect from that kind of a viewpoint is that as we get close to to the uh, the moment when this all starts, the you know the pieces finally start really coming together um, in in real time, that the Saudis are going to be noticeably absent um, from getting too associated uh, with what ends up you know be becoming the new Ottoman Empire, mm -hmm. um, and I I so I, I I would I would suspect that that the Saudi pullback from the negotiations for normalizing relationships with Israel, I would suspect that if, you know, if this is the time that we think that it could be, um, that, that, that would be, that would be what would be expected. 
Um, we wouldn't expect Saudi, you know, the Saudis to jump on board and go with this. Yeah, and they've gotten burned by doing that in earlier, you know, excursions yeah. against Israel. So, um, but I, I think they'll, you know, I think they'll do that. And and if so, it, it's it plays right into the scenario at the very end of time in the, you know, as the Bible states those things. So now um, we throw Turkey in here. I know we've talked about keeping our eyes on Turkey. And um, uh, it's interesting how Turkey has over the last year, ma- majorly within the last year, kind of played peace cards with everybody. I mean, they're they're bailing countries out of out of economic disaster in Africa and other places. Uh, they they are um, coming together to try to work <laughs> peace treaties out uh, with with different Arab groups with with Jewish groups. Where where does I mean when we've talked before we we've talked so there'll be this great kind of implosion of of an attack on Israel. They're going to come from the north, from the uh, every which way, and go to attack Israel. But at some point in the midst of that, there's potentially going to be a a possible natural disaster. We said whether you we had talked about it could be a major earthquake because of the fault lines there. It could be volcanic eruption. It, but it, there is going to be something devastating that happens that's going to majorly when we get to the time that where it's this is this is the final bat this is the battle here this is the one that everybody's been waiting for where antichrist is going to come onto the scene uh something's going to have to happen to completely um cripple the enemies of israel to where they have no choice but to surrender to whatever peace agreements israel chooses to offer or or accept which one of them would obviously be the temple is now ours and no longer yours yes yeah yeah you know i i I definitely see that uh so and the way i see that is that the 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 description of what's going to happen to set that up is in ezekiel 38 and 39 and so that fits in really well with what we are watching closely with what's going on in israel now that will involve Persia, Iran. That'll involve um, uh, Magog and Gog. That's Russia, uh, and then it'll involve Kush, which is the Sudan. It's not Ethiopia. It's the Sudan, and it's uh, Libya. Put, and then some um, uh, Gomor and uh, Tagorma, uh, which are most likely. Uh, Caucasus peoples. Uh, so you're talking again, Southern Russia, maybe something, you know, something from Azerbaijan or or uh, Georgia or Armenia, something of that nature. But that is the Ezekiel 38 and 39 alliance that actually does the heavy lifting. I think in that alliance, the likelihood is that the king of the north, who who is uh, most, most likely to be Turkey, uh, will probably hold back um, almost in the same way that I just was mentioning about what I would expect from the Saudis. Um, And if he does, when this, this alliance of Russia and Iran and these few other um, um, Muslim and Arab powers go in and end up getting destroyed in that cataclysm, um, he'll be um, the one he'll be the one who can step into the vacuum. And that I think is what will precipitate the coming together of the 10 horns. And well, you're, you're right there. They're the chief, the chief feature of that is they'll sign that covenant with many for a seven. They're going to sign that covenant with Israel. And I do believe that one of the major, one of the major um, propositions in that covenant will be that Israel will get the temple mount and you know will have control and power over it so uh, and you know when things like this are happening in and that's got to be like politically that's got to be even a bigger blow than getting the the israel back in 1948 where you got your proportion from the un from palestinians like it seems like that's going to even be i mean they were they were ticked off and upset because they didn't get what they wanted and they had control of the dome then you know, Jerusalem yeah. is a free city for both, but they had the, the Muslims had have had that for 
millennial. It's you know for the most part not millennial, but for hundreds of years. So well, it was six six hundred and seventy something or eighty something yeah. when they took over Jerusalem, and and other than I mean they've had it. The only time they haven't had it, the Crusaders had it. Yeah. Um. You know. So um, that's going to yeah. be a massive blow to Islam. It uh, will be, and that's that's though when you think about it. Um, the when the Bible talks about the seven years, right? And you have that covenant that starts things off if it gives the right to Israel to to build the temple. And I I think you're absolutely right. The the cataclysm is going to be of the nature that it is so um gut wrenching and overwhelming that you know even 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 you know even Muslims are going to uh say okay as the Antichrist hands over this area. But the thing that that's going to be going on there is the agenda to take that over is always going to be there in three and a half years into the that period of time. The Antichrist is going to turn on that covenant and go in and Declare try himself to God. Over. Yeah. Um, he's going to, uh, I mean, this is a worse defilement of the temple than Antiochus Epiphanes I did. Mean, it's going to be worse, worse than eating a pulled pork it. sandwich sitting in Jerusalem, right? Yeah. <laughs> he's going to go in there and declare himself God. Uh, <laughs> Well, he eats a hot dog and sour. I don't know, but uh, yeah, you won't bring any sweet baby rays with. (laughs) But 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 you have to think about that. I mean, because when when Israel was uh, created as a nation, you know, Palestinian Arabs were given their portion. The Jewish were given their portion. They they had this. You mean they were given their sliver? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But it's interesting. Every war that the Arabs have come against Israel, they have walked off with more real estate. Yeah. And miraculously won. So to me, as a, a a Muslim Arab claiming right to Israel, uh, I would be hesitant to even launch an attack against Israel because every time since they started, they have come out the victor. Now you you're you're too young to remember this. I was uh you know, I was uh I was a probably an adolescent, a young teenager, let's see, 73, that would have been 14, okay. So um but uh, in the Yom Kippur War, it was amazing because um, this was a war. Now, a couple of the other wars, uh, Israel had made uh, preemptive strikes, and that kind of is what started the actual combat. But in this war, um, this was a, a coordinated attack from from Syria in the, the north and the east and from, um, from Egypt uh, across the Sinai. And... Um, Egypt uh, just came came across and was uh, you know moving and and uh, it lo- looked like they were going gangbusters and you know then all of a sudden it's like Israel caught its breath and started coming back and within like hardly any time at all it just happened all so fast Israel was at the Suez getting ready to put pontoon bridges down and go into Egypt proper mm-hmm. and that's when that's yeah. when they said oh okay let's have a peace treaty <laughs> of course yeah right. Yeah, right. Right. Well, because, you know, if they wouldn't have if they wouldn't have sued for peace, Israel would have been in Cairo in in hours. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, it's it it is one of those things that we see played over and over again uh, in since, you know, since 48. And and the world will never learn this lesson. Right. But those of us who have the Bible and who have uh, the, you know, the God given uh, uh, faith to to look into it and believe in it. We see that that God has said these things before they they occurred, and um, you know there the um, uh, the way that time plays out and the plan that God has for this scenario. You know, after Jesus came, went to the cross, put in the tomb, rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sent out the disciples into the world. Um, you know, everything has been on a on a plan on a, on an agenda that God has told us about beforehand it was hard to understand it before some things came into place but we we are at an age where i mean that 1948 wake-up call israel declares itself an independent nation right may of 1948 that um that should have you know that should have raised the the faith hackles on anyone who who's a serious reader of the bible yet you know we still have believers who who seem to relegate prophecy to some trash bin that doesn't seem you know they don't see it applying to to events well it's like 
Jesus talked about these things. He talked about yeah. them like he believed them and like he anticipated them coming to pass. And I think, I think we have. And we to, should too, and we, we should, should too. That's that's what he encouraged. You should too. You keep going. You should too. This is what, what you look for. That's exactly. I mean, isn't that what the all of it discourse yeah. is? Yeah. Here's what you look for. <laughs> yeah. What what point do you think um, can be made on behalf of? groups like Hamas and Hezbollah and Iran, because really, when you think about it, they're the three players at this current point. What point do you think that they can actually justifiably make in their blatant brutality and disrespect for human life? Like, to that, me, I can I can understand maybe you get that wild, crazy Islamic terrorist who's looking for his 72 virgins and goes and blows himself up. Okay, even then, I don't get it because the Quran never said if you get if what what sex those virgins were. Well, that's a whole other story. But but the idea here is I could I could understand maybe some degree of that. What I don't understand is the let's just go out and just blow up and and kill innocent lives for for what purpose? What is the it, purpose they're trying to? There is there really is no purpose. Well, you know, it's from our standpoint, right? It's satanic. We we don't believe that Mohammed saw the angel Gabriel. We believe he saw he saw we yeah he saw a demon. He saw a um uh, he saw a fake from from the pit of hell. And when we look at Islam, we see it as especially when you look at uh, you know at at uh, its prophetic kind of heritage that's, that's developed since where you know they're looking for the you know the the, the succession of imams and. Um, are uh, looking for basically, you know, the the opposite of the coin of what Jesus said would happen. He said that the gospel would go into all the world, then the end would come, and that you know he would come back. We would rule and reign with him, so there would be this, um, you know, this this global uh, unity of peoples under the Messiah. Well, you know, in, in Islam, that's all turned on its head. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, where does that come from? Well, I think that is I think that's that's what what Revelation chapter 17 was trying to get get at when it talked about the successions of kings, seven kings, then an eighth. The eighth is the Antichrist, um, the seven kingdoms. Uh, you know, I think that what that was getting at was this succession of history throughout uh, throughout you know throughout the uh, the existence of mankind biblical history that is and you know what 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 that history uh shows is that the devil uh, you know satan his his basic strategy has been the same since you know the early days of humanity and that is to co-opt that initial prom promise that came in the the garden of eden the proto evangelion uh, as it's often called the first pronouncement of the the good news um, he will bruise his head. Uh, he will strike his heel, um, and so the 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 devil has has been in the business of trying to dispossess the affections of of people from God where they belong, and the the basic the basic uh, scheme that he uses is a substitution. He wants to put in his um, his pawn. <laughs> in the place of the promised Messiah right. and then have human beings in their rebellion and their idiocy and their <laughs> unbelief to actually turn to him um, through this, this, this chill. Delusion. This delusion yeah. is what it will be. Yeah. And, and, and so, and, it, and it's funny because you, you and I've talked about this and I know we've referenced the one MacArthur video of, of the um, you know, the, the whole, the whole Islamic Messiah the, everything that dis, describes who their Messiah is, is who the Antichrist is to that of, yeah. of, of is described for us within scripture. So they're looking for this demonic being really uh, to, to take over and, and they'll be fooled by that delusion. And it always cracks me up. You know, I've never understood why Islamic people get so fed up and like threaten to kill people who draw pictures of Muhammad. And, you know, people make fun of Christianity all the time. You don't see us out there going and blowing people up, but the reality is, you know, the, 
when it comes to Islam, well, we, Islam we have done things like yeah, that. In yeah, we, we have. Yeah, OK, no. yeah, we have. All right. <laughs> no doubt. Right. We have the KKK here in the United States. There's your oh, well, there's your we, Taliban. Well, we had those hundreds of years of crusades and, you know, we'll kill the Muslims. We'll we'll kill the Orthodox. We'll, you know, we'll kill the Catholics. Kill. We'll kill the, you know, the Protestants. We go back and forth. Right. I'm, I'm marching. And if you're in my way, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, we we don't you know they don't talk about the fact that that Muhammad married his nine year old niece and his nine year old niece murdered him. Um, I don't know whether or not he ascended after that point, according to their theology. But you know you don't you don't hear about those things. Um, how about how about this whole idea uh, of of bizarreness? I've been looking in the news where you have all of these Palestinian Arabs in New York who are protesting, blaming the Israelis for yeah. the attack Big that bottom. Hamas had on Israel. Yeah. Yeah, it is bizarro world. Um, you know, the thing, when you look at that kind of behavior, right, and it makes no sense to us, it, it's like we look at it and we like, man, like, I why just, would you do that in the United States of all places? Like, we could kill you. Well, we we could I mean, <laughs> in jail. I mean, it's like, it's like why we look at we look at some well, I mean, even going back to to the terrorist terrorist attacks, you know, at the at the towers. Um, you know, we, we look at at those kinds of things, and it's just it defies any kind of reason. And there's 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 an interesting thing there in Second Thessalonians in chapter two, where he talks about how the Antichrist actually ends up getting into his position um, and gets the adulation and the cooperation of the of the people of the people of the world. Um, you know, a lot of people think that maybe the Bible thinks it's going to be some you know, some great charismatic figure in, and none of that's necessary any more than it's necessary to see Samuel as a, as a bodybuilder or Samson, I should say, mm -hmm. say, you know, it, it, a lot of people would, you know, like if they're drawing graphics for a Sunday school curriculum, they'll have a graphic of Samson. He looks like, you know, a WWF wrestler, you know, ready to go. Six the he looks yeah, like yeah. The <laughs> I'm the governor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's I, I you know, I don't I don't I don't think that's a proper way to look at Samson. I think he probably looked like me more. He was some scrawny little guy. And uh and and the thing that scared the bejeepers out of his enemies was they couldn't understand how and why he had such ability and power, right? Um, and they knew he, it must be God, right? It must be God. But um, when it comes to the Antichrist, we look at what is kind of prefacing the Antichrist, and it makes no sense to us. But but what Second Thessalonians says is that the, the restrainer, who I believe is the Holy Spirit in the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think it's that's not pretty just clear the Holy in Scripture. Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's it's the Holy Spirit in the church, right, in his temple. And when he's taken out of the way, right, then the Bible doesn't say that that people, you know, make up their own decision, make up their own mind to follow the Antichrist. It says that a strong delusion is sent upon them. And so instead of having the Holy Spirit doing what the Holy Spirit is doing now in the earth that ends up restraining you know, the absolute folly of some of what we're seeing and scratch our heads about um, when the Holy Spirit in the church is taken out of the way. Um, a spirit uh, of of demon uh, of just demon, um, um, what would he say, persuasion or whatever is going to be poured out on the earth and they'll believe the lie. They will believe the lie as a result of that. So it's like, um, you know, they're they're we we get little inklings of that um and i think that's the way it is even even on the good side you know we were talking about how on one side you have the messiah on the other side you have uh, the, the what is the the 13th imam or whatever and yeah their messiah which is the antichrist right yeah right and and i think you know you get the holy spirit you get the spirit of delusion you know one coin you know one side of the and, coin the other side and of the what coin. has satan been trying to do ever since the beginning trying to be god he uh, wanted to be like God. I mean, that, that was it. He wants to be the one that's in well, He wants to be the creating being. And he, well, wants and, and there's, the, there's the, where there's where the lack of, of logic starts, right? Because he looks into the face of God with eyes open. He's not like, you know, human beings were separated. Right. And yeah. so 
you know, from birth, we're separated, we're separated as we come into existence. And, and so, you know, there's, there's something mysterious about God. We're, we, we're not seeing the whole picture. I don't think Adam and Eve saw the whole picture, but because they were created in innocence, they weren't created in fullness. They weren't created in, they were perfect in the sense they didn't have a flaw, but they weren't perfect in the sense that they didn't, you know, they didn't know everything. They didn't understand everything. Um, but, but the devil, I mean, he was face to face with God. He was eyeball to eyeball with God and thought that he could take him out, you know? Um, so, you know, when you, when you think what kind of twisted thought would think that looking on the glory of God, it gives you some idea, the twisted thought that you're mm -hmm. going to see manifested in people that, that, uh, you know, follow that rebellious, um, that rebellious thinking rather than surrendering and submitting through faith in Christ and, and okay. uh, yielding their lives to uh, their creator. So um, yeah, he, he just tries to, his whole scheme, I think even more so than being God, I think God, I think God set him down so thoroughly uh, in Genesis chapter three, that he knew that the gig was up. Um, so I think, I think really, he's worked now out of just extreme hatred, hatred for God and everything that God loves. And so, uh, you know, the one thing that I think he just wants to do is destroy. Mm -hmm. Um, and since, you know, we're the darlings of God's eyes. Um, and I think that's what we are. We are the apple of God's eye. Um, you know, not just Jerusalem, not just Jews, but everyone in Christ. I think, you know, the, because here, here's the thing. I preached a sermon on this a couple of weeks ago and I thought, I thought, I thought it would, uh, you know, I thought it would uh, maybe get a little more thought, but it, it really didn't. But, um, you know, surprisingly so uh, for me. But um, every, you know, God's plan for us is we're all going to be like, like Jesus. When we see him, we're going to be like him because we'll see him as he is. Mm -hmm. And so everyone that you know that loves Jesus is going to be just like Jesus. They're going to love like Jesus. They're going to know like Jesus. They're going to relate like Jesus. And so, you know, God's plan is that he's going to have a, a kingdom of Jesus, Jesus's. We're, you know, we're all going to be as Jesus walks as the son of man. We're we're all going to walk in in that pattern and in, in that way. And so, you know, that's that's God's grand and glorious plan. And, uh, you know, Satan looks at that and he just despises yeah. it, hates it altogether. And so, you know, this is this is what's driving him. And so even as he endeavors to do what he does amongst mankind i think more even even more than wanting our adulation because i think he realizes that that we're all going to be you know well i shouldn't say we because we're not going like somebody else is going right but all those that are going where he's going they're all going to be frying in the same stew mm -hmm. right there's <laughs> there's there's no love there right mm -hmm. um so but i think that you know, I think that 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 right now, the thing that drives them more than anything else is just we want to get as many of us in the lifeboat as we can. That's that's our goal. His goal is to get as many thrown overboard as possible yeah. before before time's up. So, I mean, you know, it just everything's is one side of the coin or the other side of the coin. Right. You know? right. The, Should the, and and with the strategicness of, again, this being the 50th anniversary of the Yom Kippur War, um, I kind of just in my brain processing, you know, all of how end times are supposed to go. The the as we've been watching uh, Erdogan uh, or however you say his name, I call him Aragon, but Erdogan, I know that's not Erdogan, 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 Erdogan uh, yeah. over in Turkey. Um, you, you almost th this was a strategically inter state planning like I, I, so. I, I find it hard to believe that it was just Hamas Hezbollah and Iran I, I, I find I mean I'd love to give Iran that much credit but I kind of feel like there are other powers wouldn't even be surprised if Turkey wasn't a player in this as well to some degree to shake it out and get things going but uh you know it, it just it to me it's it's too strategic for it to be one person, similar to 9-11. It was too strategic for it to just be one group of people. There were many groups of people yeah. in a network that put this together, and it took years to do it. Should we be concerned with that, keeping that kind of picture in mind, should we be concerned right now? 
Uh, well, I don't know if we should be concerned. Um, it, it's it's hard not to be concerned in the sense that you know I have I have four sons. Um, now they're getting to be of age where you know some kind of military adventurism you know on some foreign shore is not necessarily going to uh, impact me, except for maybe in my in my youngest son. But um, you know uh, when we think about war we think about our you know our kids having to go fight or we think about you know things like terror terror attacks coming our way and i would say we have to be concerned um to to some degree at least on the terroristic front but i i don't see anything in the prophecy of scripture that tells me america is going to be a player in this so you know you have to you have to you have to ask yourselves you know why isn't America a player? We are we're the richest nation in the world. We are the the underwriters of Israel. Um, why aren't we in the mix? And to tell you the honest God truth, when when I see the kind of things that God has said throughout the Old Testament about the nation of Israel and whose glory it is and how jealous he is that that the world knows they they are doing this because I've chosen them to. Right. Um, it would make sense to me that someone like America, who kind of styles itself as the protector of Israel and the undergirder of yeah. Israel, and, you know, all of these things, I it it, it would make. We stab her life. in the back at the first moment we get. But, yeah, we're her <laughs> undergarder. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it, it makes me it makes me think that it would make both prophetic and poetic sense for America to be knocked off removed kilter and not from not global, be part yeah removed from the global table i mean we've we've talked about in the previous episode about the potential you know cataclysmic components of like the super volcanoes but uh one of the guys who i'll be having on the show in december when his book comes out had talked about and, I, and I, I don't know if you've been following this in the news but over the last two months there's been these supposed speculations coming out that the government has hidden from the people that there are anywhere between nine to twelve what they call dirty bombs here in the united states and of course, it's it's linked to the whole illegal immigration component, uh, that idea mentality that we've allowed China and we allowed Russia to come over here. And in the midst of that, they have hidden somewhere in our country nine to 12 atomic bombs that they have the buttons for, but we have no clue where they're at and could see them being potential bargaining chips, for instance, with Ukraine. Well, Russia says, you stop supporting Ukraine. We're going to blow up Houston. We're going to blow up Washington, D.C. Uh, you know, I could see, you know, if, if that were the case. Now, this is just hypotheticals here based off of leaked classified information that's now come out to the public. Um, I could see, you know, if they were smart, they would have put all the bombs in Yosemite National Park. But, uh, <laughs> you know, well, I, I, could, no. I could see that, you know, you, you blow up nine or 12 cities around this country with a nuclear detonator, you, you're going to level the economy and completely wipe the United States out as a as a global player. If it weren't the the Yosemite or major earthquake, that could be another way that economically disastrous event that removes us from the global player altogether. Well, I think, you know, I think you're hitting on on the, the, the thing that matters, and that is the impact. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily it's not necessarily the you know, the bright lights of the actual event that might bring us into a situation where we're undermined. It's it's the impact. So, for instance, if if, um, you know, if you had you if you had something that that was um, something, you know, something of of the shocking um, nature, like the, the Twin Towers being hit. But can you imagine if if, you know, if there was radiation involved with that so that you know, you didn't have like a couple of city blocks that were affected, but you, you had, had a whole city annihilated in the in the downdrift well, of. You, you don't even have to annihilate it, right? I mean, you, all you had to do is is irradiate the Manhattan mm -hmm. um, Finance Center, and and have you have you pulled out one of the you know one of the legs off of the stool of our economy, probably so. And the same thing with Washington or Chicago or some other place uh, as well. So yeah, I, I've I've always I've always uh, said that america isn't there i think that i think that the description of the sixth seal gives you a place to go to to understand 
where that might happen. But it doesn't have to happen that way. We just know that America isn't there, and and you have to you have to uh, understand that in some way. Mm-hmm. And it could be it could be a nuclear uh, attack. It could be um, it could be a biological attack. I mean, when COVID you know came right. along, um, people were quite uh, scared about that kind of thing, and right. you saw what that did to this this country and it was i mean when you actually look back at the numbers and look at what was happening that that thing was way overblown and way overplayed and um you know people died from heart attacks and were labeled covid deaths yeah well and and that's not to diminish i mean there's a lot of people that 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 died yeah yeah. you know they died coughing and, and miserable and 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 you know there's there's no nothing good about that but um but you saw what it did to this country um, so it did even to the world. Um, you know, you, it, it wouldn't take something like Yellowstone to cripple the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I do think that the description of the Sixth Seal in Revelation um, is either there's there's two ways I think that 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 seem very plausible as far as interpreting that. One is that you have a nuclear war where where you know like basically Russia and China and, and America are emptying their their nu- nuclear arsenals and they cause you know these rolling clouds uh, across the landscape that bring death and whatnot or, or and I think it's I, th- I think it, this is the more likely is that it'll be an act of God you know an act of God um, which would be something like Long Valley which Long Valley is still still the one that I think is the most likely to go off if it goes off, you know, if that's the way that, that, that this goes, I still think Long Valley is, would probably be the most likely, um, but it could be Yellowstone. Uh, you know, we, you know, the camp, uh, the camp, uh, I can't even get their, the name right. Campy Fiegra um, in Naples is, you know, kind of stirring into action. And, you know, that's a super volcano as well. It wouldn't necessarily knock out the U S um, you know, could it be associated with something that would, you know, be a uh, part of what goes on in Ezekiel 38, 39. It seems a little far away. Um, uh, so, you know, who knows? The the volcanic field, the, um, the uh, what's it called? The Levant uh, Volcanic Province. Um, it runs, you know, across southern Lebanon, a little bit over there into Syria, down into Jordan and Israel in the northern parts there. It's not a, it's not, it, you know, it's not, capable of producing something like Yellowstone or something like Long Valley, but it certainly would be wipe away. It's the enemies of Israel in a heartbeat. Yeah. You know, between darkness, ash and a lot of gas, you know, poisonous gas. um, And then, you know, in the confusion, having the enemies kill each other. Yeah. Well, you you gotta, you gotta look at it. That's, that's natural gas. I mean, when we talk, when we had cave, uh, not cavemen, when we had people down in coal mines, we sent birds down there because you can't, you don't know that gas is there till it kills you, till you're dead. It's too late. Well, and it made a really good police song. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Mary in a coal mine, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Should, um, one of the things I've been seeing all over the, the internet and all over uh, Facebook uh, since this happened is pray for the peace of Israel. Do we want to pray for the peace of Israel? As believers, or are we? Should we anticipate that? Yeah, that's great. We want to pray for the peace because we're out of here. Or, or what's what's? The, how do we how do we interpret that whole thing as far as uh, apocalyptic? Do we pray for the peace of Israel? I, I think we always pray for peace. You know, it's uh, when it comes to to prophetic things, and and we're talking about judgment. Um, I, I see that God disciplines people who cheer destruction. Um. You know, and so I, I think that we can pray for the peace of of Israel, um, and and all of that. But I I I think that I do think that there's kind of like a a proviso in there, in that we are saying your will be done, and God's will is to bring this to an end, mm-hmm. and the pathway to that end. It's a lot of war, a lot of conflict, a lot of terrible things are going to happen on planet Earth. And so, um, you know, it's I think probably the safest way to go is not to get caught up on one side or the other, because I I know sometimes, um, you know, when I see 
the enemies of Israel rise up like this. I, it's just like it's such an affront to God as I know him truly to be. Mm -hmm. There's something in me that just says, wipe them all out, you know? Yeah. And I and I realize that that's that's very human uh, of me. And it's not it's not where it's not where I need to be, not not only for the fact that it's prideful and arrogant probably to go that way, but but it's not healthy for me as a as a humble child of God, mm -hmm. you know, to embrace that kind of mentality. So I think probably the best thing to do is say, come, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, and I, I would rather say that than you know, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It's, uh, you know, I, I know that we have that, you know, we have that little invitation in the Psalm <laughs> to, to, um, the, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And, and it certainly, uh, is something I think the Israelis, uh, would be very well to, to, to pray. But I think that when we have this ambivalence about, um, things that, that need to be done and have to be done that are part of God's plan and that, that part of God's plan is bringing the people of Israel back into Israel and and reestablishing their ownership of the land that God gave them. Um, that's a high and noble thing. And so, you know, if if it yeah. if it comes by war, it's unfortunate. But at the same point in time, it is it is part of the God given spelled out in the Bible pathway. Yeah. The Jesus coming back and ruling on planet Earth. And so, you know, we can say, come, Lord Jesus, and we'll leave the details up to him. So so 75 years into Israel's existence now, uh, when we think about it, you know, 75 years in here, Israel's been around. Is this, would you say this could be the beginning of the end of, uh, of, of it, uh, of Israel? Oh, or could this it just be another skirmish with Israel? When we look at it, the won't, political... it won't be the end. Of, it won't be the, uh, you know, this is one thing I think I can say. Now, this is interpretive. This is not something I can say. Here's the text in first. But I do think this is this is the repercussion of what's there in the scripture. And that is Israel having been reestablished is going nowhere. Right. It is there is it's not going to be destroyed. It's not going to be pushed out of that land again. Um, you know, the, the ship has sailed. As far as where God is taking things, Israel coming back to Israel is the thing that just says it's going this way. Now, the problem with all of this is that everything prophetic that really needs to be in place for things to to actually happen, you know, that the Bible talks about in terms of the tribulation or end times, anything, else, it's, it's already there. I mean, the only thing that really needs to happen to make it all just click, 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 you know, like, you know, something just popping all into perfect shape um, is the rapture. Is the aliens need to remove the Christians from the world? Right? <laughs> well, that's the way that's the way the Antichrist is going to sell it. <laughs> the, he I think. the headlines, you know, yeah. <laughs> aliens. But, <laughs> you know, so, I mean, yeah. what needs to happen? Nothing. So we're on this knife edge. And it's hard to be there because, you know, you're living with anticipation and expectation and then you have to, you know, you have to balance, you know, in your heart before God. Um, am I too enamored with trying to get out of here that I that I that I don't do what He wants me to do while I, while I'm here? Yeah. Or or you know, um, do I just toss it all out and say it's too hard to deal with, and I'm just going to act like it's not going to happen, and it's, it's crazy to think about it and and live my life like it's going to last for ever the way that it's going. Um, you know, I, I think that it's I think it's really tough to live on the knife's edge. Yeah. And I yeah. think that we have been living on that knife edge, you know, to some degree since, you know, since 48. But certainly with all that's unfolded since then. Mm -hmm. And like you say, 75 years, when I read this story about the kings in Revelation chapter 17, it tells me that the eighth um comes and i you know i get the feel from the text that it's comes on the heels of or comes soon after it's it's not a it's not a long duration and the like within uh, a generation versus thousands of years yeah yeah well and and you had you know when i look at those seven kings these are the seven times when when the devil thought he was going to co-opt god's promise for a messiah and the, the only way the only ways for him to do that um basically is to undermine or 
or dispossess uh, or alienate Israel. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you have seven schemes through history in which that occurred. The last of those was Adolf Hitler, uh, who tried to destroy them, just try to wipe them out. Uh, that was, you know, the final solution. Yeah. Um, and I think it was not only Hitler's final solution, but I think in some respects it was the devil's final solution as far as that goes. Now the the uh, the uh, things are going to um, um, be put into to um, uh, things that are going to be occurring because, you know, God is writing a very, you know, a very close script now. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that, yeah, I, I think we should be concerned in some respect, and that is that um, bad things can happen. I mean, you know, how long does it take for this to unfold? It might be two weeks and, uh, you know, who knows what might might bombs go off and other things. Yeah. Things like that, you know, things like that can happen. We don't want to be fearful or anything else. We just want to do the best we can to live in faith. Um, but the one thing that I do think that if it does, if this thing does continue to uh, step into what what is obviously going to be Ezekiel 30, 38 and 39, um, we look up and re realize our redemption is drawing nigh. Yeah, if this continues to escalate and all the things we've talked about, uh, not only on the show, but even before we I even started this thing about, you know, Russia and China and Israel and the Arabs and all the ties everybody has and how this is all going to play. I, I really I really think that right now the the I really re think right now that Iran is actually the most interesting place in the world mm -hmm. uh, prophetically because of what's happened with Hamas. And um, I, I know that Hezbollah has their fingers in the pie. They've done like, you know, a few feigning actions in the north. But um, I think that watching what happens in Iran, it, particularly if Israel strikes out at, at Iran, which after losing all the civilians that they have, I would not be surprised if, if, if they are not pulling out plans that were developed for such a time as know, this. Yeah. So where they they're just going to be like, fine. We're going to just nail in and go right through Iran's front gate. Boom. We'll get oh, rid of the yeah, terror you know, group right there. Would uh, you know what what would it be far outside of the realm of imagination to expect that like maybe tomorrow or some other day this week we might you know wake up and read the the headlines and uh, find that Iran has a you know has been hit by a strange explosion that's wiped out, you know, so much of its capital city or its nuclear program or, you know, whatever it might be, I, I would say, you know, yeah, probably. I, I think that would be a really plausible thing that might happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Steve, I'm glad we kind of, I kind of just threw this together. I texted you and said, Hey, considering the events that have happened, we probably should get together and have a chat. Um, you know, these, these real world events happening. This is, yeah. you know, this is unfolding if it continues to escalate and Israel doesn't just deal with the Hamas issue, but decides to go after Hezbollah and decides to turn its attention toward Iran. We're going to see alliances of China and Russia and North Korea and others getting involved. We're going to start seeing the the uh, May, uh, Gog and Magog, and we're going to start seeing all of these little players as it escalates start to unfold before our eyes, and who knows? Or uh, or it'll just uh, calm down and we'll stay up on the knife's edge. Yes, stay up on the knife's edge. It's it's true. You're you're right because it is. It, you know, there are times that, that you know we have moments like this, and it's like two weeks, two months of unsettling, and then all of a sudden, for three years, it goes four years, it goes back to to not too much craziness and um you know, you know when when jesus said no man knows the day or hour man he meant it <laughs> yeah because there are so many times how many times have we sat and thought this could be it this could be it yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, you know it, we're just we're just so close to everything yeah almost anything you know it could be a, a major yeah. uh, a major event in in you know the course of unfolding prophetic um yeah. uh, history so well, thanks again, Steve, for, for jumping on the show last minute. Uh, this will be out um, pretty quickly. Uh, I'm going to make a few edits, and um, I encourage those of you who watch this to uh, –
just sit back and kind of take our conversation in, go to the scriptures, go look and read through Ezekiel 38, 39, Revelation 17, uh, Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2. Uh, there's several different scriptures you you could go to, um, you know, go through and read, reread through Daniel uh, and then reread through Revelation. And just kind of one of the things I love to do when I'm reading is read the different commentaries, uh, not necessarily get caught up into what they're all saying, oh, this is what's got to happen, but just to read them to to kind of challenge my own spiritual self to, wow, this could be at any minute. Uh, I may not even get this uploaded. Who knows? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> hey, I, <laughs> but, <laughs> I, I, I won't, I won't have any, anything to say bad about that. I'm ready. To <laughs> but uh, this is Mike Beckett here uh, from the dead prophet. I'm just encouraging everybody who continues to watch to continue to try to do your best to be uh, an authentic disciple of Jesus Christ every day, waking up, serving him to the best you can. And when we fall down, pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off and continue to move forward uh, in being a disciple of, of Jesus Christ. Uh, Hi, Mike Beckett from The Dead Prophet here. I want to just take a moment and thank you. Thank you for your support and your continued faithfulness to watch our show over the past year as we've launched this ministry. In the upcoming months, we have some great topics, great shows, and great guests that will be joining us on our show. In fact, the next four months, we have totally booked for show tapings, uh, and we should have a schedule ready to go for the next six months. We do ask that as you continue to watch our show on YouTube, if you would do us one favor, if you would click the subscribe button. One of our goals by the end of 2024 is to reach 1,000 subscribers so we can go to that next level as far as YouTube uh, shows go. Don't forget that you can continue to help support us by going to our website, purchasing one of our uh, items, or giving a donation at thedeadprofit.net. Have a great day. Is it time?